Good evening, this is News Channel 8, your local information source for the latest in local news, weather and sports. I'm Petty Officer Scott Kaminsky. On Saturday night, Diego Garcia came together with Health Services to wish a happy 98th birthday to the Hospital Corps and a happy 48th to the dental technicians. The event was definitely a hit. Taking roughly two and a half months to plan, DG's first ever hospital corps and dental technician ball was a sellout. The event's co-chairman, Petty Officer Steven Perez, said he was very satisfied with how the night turned out. I think it was great considering that we're in a uh, isolated location. Uh, it's kind of hard to get supplies and get decorations, but um, it came out pretty good. I was pretty impressed and I'm really happy with it. The festivities began with colors and a flag ceremony for fallen comrades followed by the invocation. After that, it was time for dinner to be served. The night's guest speaker, Captain David Bryce, said corpsmen and dental technicians should reflect on the heroism and sacrifice of their predecessors. The ceremonies continued with the cutting of the cakes and a poem from the Marines' view of Corman. The real heroes are the dots, and it's about time we all gave thanks. The ball went on into the night with lots of music and dancing. Senior Chief Ronald Centilla, the oldest corpsman at the gala, said the dedication of the ball committee really shined on the event. This is by far, for what the capabilities of these kids had, because it was all done by the... Uh, E1 through E6 uh, corpsmen at our clinic have done by far the best job of any ball I've been to. Health Services Senior Officer Commander Chuck Updegrove, a former corpsman himself, had this to say about the night's honorees. If anybody understands the term and the attitude shipmate, I'd say that corpsmen and dental techs exemplify it more than anybody that I've ever known in the uh, United States Navy. Funds for the event were raised through a number of ways, including civilian clothes chits and the dunk tank you might have seen at the last island-wide picnic. Coming up, we'll take a look at one of DG's endangered species. That's after a look at the AMC flight schedule. Voluntary island-wide beach cleanup is scheduled for June 28th, starting at 7.30 a.m. A barbecue will be hosted by MWR at the beach house following the cleanup at 12.30. For more information, contact your command senior enlisted advisor. The ship store will be open for business June 25th and closed June 28th due to monthly inventory. Diego Garcia's 24-hour weather forecast calls for partly cloudy skies with isolated rain showers. Tomorrow's high will reach 88 degrees with a low of 76. The sun will rise at 722 and set at 704. The tides will drop at 3.09 a.m. and at 3.36 p.m. Tides are expected to rise at 9.28 in the morning and again at 9.59 in the evening. 
Inland Lagoon winds will be southeast at 10 to 15 knots with seas from 1 to 3 feet. Your 24-hour weather forecast is provided courtesy of the Naval Pacific Meteorology and Oceanography Detachment, Diego Garcia. I'm Petty Officer Siegfried Brunner, DG Sports. Tonight's big sporting news is the Sunday afternoon Big Gun Skeet Tournament. More than 30 shooters turned out for the big shootout. Participants are divided up into three groups according to expertise. Each group gets two rounds of 25 shots for a maximum of 50 points. In the Class C group, Bob Samoa wins with 38 hitters. Pat Wiedemann comes in second and Jim Champer wins third in a double shootoff. Toby Vincent takes Class B with 40 points. Tim Hathaway and Gary Bumgardner place second and third respectively. Jamie Moore proves to have the biggest gun of all. He brings down an impressive 45 birds to beat out James Sonder and Ted Rell for the title. In the ladies division, Jane Crocker wins with 18. She's followed by Heidi Jensen and Sarah Baton. In other sports, El Pinoy grounded VP1 15-14 in Friday night's softball action. All scores provided courtesy of Rec Services. I'm Betty Officer Siegfried Brunner, DG Sports. Turtle Cove is an ideal setting for a recreational area, but it's also an important habitat for the island's wildlife. Wayne White takes a look at Diego Garcia's turtles on this edition of Nature Watch. Hello, welcome to Nature Watch. I'm Wayne White, the environmental manager for the island's boss contractor. Today we're here at Turtle Cove and we're going to be looking for a couple of Diego Garcia's most rare and interesting animals. That is the marine turtle. Now marine turtles are actually marine reptiles, air-breathing animals of ancient origin. The fossil records indicate that they go back over 200 million years and were especially numerous during the Cretaceous period approximately 130 million years ago. Now here on Diego Garcia you might see one of two different species. First, it's possible that you would see the green sea turtle. The green sea turtle is a large turtle, average size approximately two to four hundred pounds. It's basically herbivorous, that is, it eats mostly uh, marine sea grasses. It is listed by U.S. law as a threatened species. The other species that we have here on Diego Garcia is the, the hawksbill turtle. Now the hawksbill is basically a carnivorous turtle. It eats mostly crustaceans. That would be crabs, lobsters, and also sometimes sponges. Now under U.S. law, the hawksbill turtle is listed as endangered, so it's very rare. It's important to realize that these animals are protected by uh, U.S. laws and also international laws. While all life is protected here on Diego Garcia, it's, it's especially important to recognize the rarity and the significance of the sea turtles and not to molest them in any way. The marine sea turtle, an interesting and ancient member of Diego Garcia's ecosystem. For Nature Watch, I'm Wayne White. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We'll leave you with a look at construction surveying down at the marina. For the entire Naval Media Center staff, I'm Petty Officer Scott Kaminsky. Have a nice evening, and we'll see you here again tomorrow. Good night.